Welcome to another gathering of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. Have a seat by the fire as we prepare to help you unlock the secrets of the travel life. From theme park thrills to Purple Mountain's majesty, we want to see it all and do it all, and we want to help you do the same. We all have those bucket list trips, once in a lifetime destinations that we'll get to someday. We're here to help you make your travel dreams a reality. Buy the ticket, take the trip. Where do you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, now tell me what's on your bucket list. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Society. It's November 1620. After 60 long, dangerous days at sea, our ship, the Mayflower, has finally arrived at Cape Cod. As we prepare to disembark, I suddenly stop and turn to face you. Wait, I say. Before we step foot on this brave new land, there's one thing I need to ask you. What's your Patronus? Mine would be a roast beef sandwich. It's a lot like my personality. And what character traits does that exemplify? Deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to think of a funny one, and I decided to just take the quiz on on Pottermore just for fun, and it turns out that they gave me a really weird answer anyway. So apparently, I'm a salmon. Oh, all right. Well, another delicious item. At least you'll swim upstream or get eaten by a bear. Yes. <laughs> And nevertheless, this fish persevered. Wait, so if Dave's Humphrey the bear, or or wait, Br'er Bear, sorry, wrong bear, <laughs> wrong bear. <laughs> yeah. and you're a salmon, are you guys like mortal enemies at this Ooh. point? Yeah, I mean, I could, you know, I could be uh, the bear from one of the jamboree. Uh, I don't think what his name is. It could be like Liver Lips or... Oh, Liver Lips. Big Al. <laughs> yeah. He's my favorite. It's one of those. You know, just pick one. It doesn't matter. Just one of the bears. <laughs> they all look the same. <laughs> Yeah, the big goofy one, that one. <laughs> that helps. That really yeah, narrows yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not the one swinging. No, up. no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's just on Saturday. Yeah, I feel like the swing wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, who's got a news story? Um, I've got uh, an interesting theme park related news story for this week. Um, a theme park uh, in Branson, Missouri is suing a man who built a dark ride in his garage over trademark infringement. So, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah. Wrap your head around that one. Um, Silver Dollar City Theme Park in Branson, Missouri, is suing a California man who built a homemade dark ride in his garage for Halloween over who owns the trademark name for the attraction itself. Um, for the past few years, uh, Scott Devonzo has built a theme park-style dark ride in his two-hard garage and welcomed thousands of visitors at Halloween to take a spin on his homemade creation that he calls Mystic Motel. Um, he trademarked the Mystic Motel name for theme park attractions in 2013 and started a company that he calls Adrenaline Attractions to develop a theme park with the Mystic Motel ride as its centerpiece. Um, in August, Silver Dollar City announced plans to build a $20 million Mystic River Falls River Rapids ride as part of a new themed land. Um, so that didn't sit well with uh, Mr. Devonzo, who had his attorney send them a letter demanding that they change the name of the Mystic River Falls ride because it infringed on his Mystic Motel trademark name. Um, and and what would you guess was Silver Dollar City's response to that? They were like, oh, gosh, yeah, we should change that. No, no, no. They turned around and responded with a 16-page lawsuit that accused... Yeah, America. <laughs> ...accused Devonzo and Adrenaline Attractions of trademark infringement, unfair competition, and an implied legal threat. Yeah. They want the U.S. District Court to declare that their theme park owns the trademark rights to Mystic in use of theme park rides and want him to change his name. So how long before Disney lays a smackdown on both of them? That's <laughs> I was just gonna say that's. It doesn't have dream or fantasy or wish in it. Yeah, but it's awfully it's awfully close to Mr. True, Manor. but do, yeah. we don't have that stateside. So, but oh, but the, yeah. the capper to all of this is that Adrenaline Attractions, according to Scott Devonzo, is uh, in development discussions with investors to build a two billion dollar Mystic City theme park at an undisclosed location. <laughs> 
in California. <laughs> I don't believe okay. that, but it, it certainly sounds like it'll help his case, but uh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, maybe if he's got all the he be if he's got all the preliminary plans, maybe. But yeah, two two billion dollars is a lot of money. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially since he's planning on building it around a garage based ride. Like, right. I mean, I'm sure he's planning on plussing that a little bit. But uh... no, wait a second. We all know where Apple computers started. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. true. Okay, you got me there. But uh, <laughs> I really don't think that this compares to <laughs> computer technology. There's there's quite a lot of amusement parks. I don't know if it's yeah. going to be the same. I mean, he'd have been just fine if he'd have just let it go, but unfortunately, he started yeah. it. Ego so. gets in the way, and you can't learn to let things go. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'm rooting for the little guy. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like all those guys that build roller coasters in their backyards. Yeah, this is pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, I, I mean, he's it. he's got a dream, so he's got a dream. <laughs> I'll be sure to he's report back when anything changes on that. Wonderful story. Dave, three more bars from that song, please. I actually don't know three more bars. <laughs> it's you know, it's actually my favorite um my favorite one, but it's been a while since we've watched it, so I uh Yes and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well Dave, how about you give us a new story? All right, so yeah, so according to the OC register, this one a new one that just came in uh actually earlier today, uh Disneyland has actually submitted an application uh, for a 350 room DVC tower with uh, supposedly located near the Disneyland Hotel. This would be the 17th DVC property for Disney. So uh, that kind of goes back to the hotel they had a couple of years. What was it last year that they had planned that was canceled? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was going to be on the other side, though. I think I saw that uh, they're taking out some backstage support type buildings behind the Disneyland Hotel. And uh, that's where this one's going to go. So, I mean, that's the, that's good, right? I mean, 350 rooms, you know, the DVC properties are usually some of the nicer ones. So I think it'll be a nice addition to Disneyland. I honestly didn't think that they would be bringing DVC to Disneyland. I mean, it's such a locals based park, but that's cool. I'm all for it. So. A timely piece of news uh, from TravelAndLeisure.com. Surprise, surprise, the TSA is expecting a record number of travelers at the airports this Thanksgiving. You don't say. Just like every other year, they're expecting to screen 26.8 million passengers between November 22nd and December 4th. <sighs> due to the holiday. TSA says that the busiest days will be Wednesday the 27th and Sunday the 1st of December. So probably too late to plan accordingly for that. So just uh, be ready to wait in line a long time. I'll uh, be flying on November 30th and December 4th. Yay. This is where pre-check really comes into play. That's the best 80-some dollars I've ever spent for five years was, was pre-check. It also helps to live in a town with a tiny airport like I do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I can get through the airport on... on uh, a rush in like five minutes. It's great. But of course, I tend to fly to Orlando most of the time, which is complete opposite end of that spectrum. So yeah, the, the pre-check really, especially if you're flying in and out of Orlando. <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually why we got it, because more often than not, they say that, you know, kids get it for free with you. So if any of your kids under the age of 12 or 13 or something like that, I, I forget the schematics, but they can go through the pre-check line with you. Um, but every time except one, they've also given it to my wife. <laughs> which is fantastic. So, you know, we don't take iPads out of bags. You can just, you know, no liquids. That same rules apply there, but it makes it so much easier. Yeah. And when you have a three-hour window, by the time you get picked up by Magic Express, get to the airport, and, you know, sometimes those lines can be 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. We've all been there. Sadly, yes. Well, while we're on the on the subject of airports, you, down at MCO Orlando, they uh, they did actually reopen the Magic at Disney store. Oh, it's yeah. in the oh, really? Yeah, the main terminal in the East Hall has officially opened to guests as of today. Closed back in July for uh, a total overhaul. That gives the airports now two shops that you can go to to get that oh. last minute merchandise uh, on your way home, or you know to wear to the parks the day you arrive, <laughs> or just pretend that you went to the parks and didn't actually go yeah. <laughs> when you got home. <laughs> or or if you're like me and for got to get your, your family 
family stuff at the park, so you need to <laughs> so you need to get them something there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe. How about we go back to my favorite segment? Let's talk about some crazy uh, vacation rental spots. Okay. First of all, we're going to head over to India to uh, Jaipur. I'm sure I'm saying that properly. <laughs> and uh, the royal family of Jaipur has just listed their entire palace on Airbnb. Built in 1727, it's the actual home to Jaipur's royal family. Over the last three centuries, it has hosted several famous dignitaries, including Bill Clinton, Prince Charles, Jackie Kennedy, and now it will host you too. Uh, Starting November, starting tomorrow, well, no, wait, in the past, a few days ago, November 23rd, the suite in the palace will be bookable via Airbnb. You'll find royally appointed interiors, including large and airy reception halls, crystal chandeliers, gilded wall decorations. Palace Complex houses a large, internationally recognized museum. Uh, All four... Oh, the suite um, within one of the private sections includes its own lounge, kitchen, bathroom, and a private indoor swimming pool. You will have access to a private butler to attend your every need. Um, And uh, royal... uh, They will also provide a cook for you. The suite will be available for the remainder of the year for $8,000 per night. Ooh, that's it? Yeah. It's a steal. Um, uh, there will be select nights available at $1,000 a night, and Airbnb will pay the remaining $7,000 as a, a donation to a local charity in India. So, huh. get together a whole bunch of friends. and uh, 8000 bucks is a bit steep. Let me go mm-hmm. digging through the couch cushions, see what I can find. I'm going to be honest. It is an entire palace, though. So. I don't think I have that many friends. Where Where is the royal family during this? Are they just out? <laughs> I think they're in another section of the palace. It's it, Oh, it's that big. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah it's like a guest, like a, like a presidential guest suite. So I assume you can't go the whole way there. It's, you know, you, once you get in, that's great. But if you go too far. Right. Presumably there's private areas that uh, you are you are locked Stay out. Stay out of the West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so the other hotel I have, uh, this one's in New York City, also from Travel and Leisure. Club Wyndham's Midtown 45 Hotel will transform one of its one-bedroom suites into the ultimate holiday-themed room in Spuddy, inspired by Buddy the Elf. Oh, and okay. is full of all of Buddy's favorite things, including spaghetti with syrup. Oh, oh. The room features a full kitchen, spacious living room, a playlist of Christmas music, oversized Christmas tree, door dressed in an elf jacket, paper snowflakes, popcorn garlands, and all of Buddy's favorite toys, light bright welcome message, jack in the boxes, and the walls covered in gift wrap. Kitchen is stocked with candy, candy canes, candy corn, and maple syrup. Everything you need to recreate Buddy's favorite dish, which is spaghetti with syrup, marshmallows, chocolate sauce, pop tarts, rolls of cookie dough, M and M's, and a few liters of soda. My <laughs> son would be so excited to hear that being served. He doesn't care what the theming <laughs> is, but that sounds like his dinner if he could choose it. So I don't know. Yeah. I think my stomach just uh, thinking about it. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, beginning uh, November 25th, it's available to book for nights uh, between December 20. I'm sorry, December 2nd and December 26th through the Club Wyndham website. Prices for the suite begin at 3.99 a night. It's not um, bad. That's not terrible. I mean, it really does look like. I don't know if this will show up on your screens, but yeah, All right, you get the it, point. It it looks like it's straight out of uh, how he decorates his stepdad's apartment. So. Look, guys, yeah, I know it's not a stepdad. It's his real dad. He wanted to find his real dad. That's on me. I'm sorry. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Christmas threw up is what I'm seeing. <laughs> yes, precisely. It's a pretty easy so. thing to clean up, too. So, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a win for the owner. <laughs> yeah, this is a genius idea. I'm surprised it's the first time that we're seeing something like this. Well, I was going to say, I found one. Um, I think it kind of plays into this week a little bit. So um, it's uh, Get Cozy This Winter in a Harry Potter-themed tiny house on Airbnb. <laughs> so uh, if you're looking for a magical getaway, go no further than the Harry Potter-themed listing on Airbnb. Uh, located in Marlboro, New York, about 90 minutes away from New York City, 
a 300 square foot tiny space. It's saying it's got uh, the crest from all four houses, uh, wands on the wall, a sorting hat, goblet of fire all hidden throughout the home, plenty of reading material, including a daily prophet, as well as all seven Harry Potter books. It's located on a... Does the bathroom, <laughs> yeah, it does. Does the bathroom come with a moaning myrtle? <laughs> you know, it doesn't say that. I hope. That's good, because I don't want that. <laughs> no, she made me very uncomfortable, in the movies at least. <laughs> that little house is only available on a limited run pop-up during the winter. You and up to three friends can book your stay for $159 a night. Just how little is this little home? Are we talking say? under the stairs a little? Or are we <laughs> 300 square feet. So it sits on a 30-acre farm with a lavender field, fire pit, easy access to vineyards and orchards. But the actual structure is 300 square feet. That's really nice utilizing the space. <laughs> yeah, so actually, you know, you, you talk about it, but it looks like from the pictures, they only have a few of them on here, but it does look like it does have some type of under the, under the steps um, bed, maybe? And then it's got like a bed on the top floor that you have to use like a, a bunk bed ladder to get up to. So <laughs> it's, it's definitely not very big. I don't know. I've never been in one of those tiny houses before. I figure if it has some theming, I might enjoy it more. <laughs> I mean, it, here's the question, though. Is it just going to be me or can, do I have to take people with me? Because if it's just me, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know it's like three friends. <laughs> ah, that's a, uh, are they going to sleep outside? <laughs> you got to be really close friends. Oh, you will be by the end of the trip, at least. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I've got some wacky, uh, wacky theme park news. Um, the Wu, the Wu Tang Clan, the legendary <laughs> hip hop group, is in talks to develop a theme park in South Korea. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so recently, in an interview, Vice President of Wu Tang Management Jimmy Kang uh, said that he is currently engaging in negotiations to build a theme park inspired by the hip hop group in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know any other details at this point but i i can't i can't expect this to be a family friendly theme park <laughs> you know i i assume there's gonna be a lot of martial arts oh themed, yeah like uh, a lot of kung fu seminars like, and like, <laughs> there's gonna be a cash rules everything around me money pit where kids can just throw around money <laughs> and I, I i just personally would like to see an old dirty bastards kid zone <laughs> Just like like a like Running a the marketing campaign. like a costume character that looks like old dirty bastard walking around, you know. <laughs> I mean, I can dream. That's wonderful. So yeah, well, uh, I'll I'll bring you more on that as it develops. <laughs> I think there's big a better chance of a Wu Tang Clan theme park happening than that poor garage guys. Two billion dollar theme park happening. Oh yeah, this one you might as well. It might well, the as thing well is, there. they've got the two billion dollars if they need it. So, <laughs> well, who knows? <laughs> They'll just sell Elon Musk another uh, exclusive album and uh, bankroll. That's the true. Park. They could just It'll make one out. album for the theme park. It only gets played in the theme park. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think I think we're starting to uh, we're starting to develop another recurring recurring segment on this show. I, I I'm hoping that we can find more weird and wacky theme park news. Uh, I'm definitely getting getting more uh, in depth into those uh, searches at this point. <laughs> After the Godzilla one, I was like, oh yeah, I need more of that. <laughs> it's easy to follow down the rabbit hole just yeah. get on wikipedia and you never know where you're gonna land yeah there's a weird one that i follow on instagram i'll have to send you a link to it's uh i think it's in spain and it's like a movie theme park but they're all like uh it's like the off-brand black market <laughs> like they're not officially nice. licensed kind nice. of thing. Like the dubai theme parks those are some of those are legit yeah. and some of those are real iffy <laughs> they have a Mad Max themed theme park in Dubai. Ooh. It's got like a it's got a smash zone where you can go and basically like beat up a car or a television or something like that. Like, <laughs> I think that's a good I, yeah, <laughs> I, I want to go to a Mad Max themed theme park. <laughs> I'm down. You could just come down to the scrapyard I work in. <laughs> <laughs> yay! Just, why is that man running around the scrapyard saying yay? We actually did stage a demolition derby once. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Listen, as a, as a guy who has to deal with safety, that's a deviation. <laughs> Dave's gonna write you up. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go right to the write up, but it's a warning. <laughs> We're just gonna have a verbal <laughs> coaching. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> just want you. Dave, you got any? You got any more news for me? Uh, I'm tapped out. Jess, do you have anything? No, that's it. It's a slow news week. Which? All right, I got one more. I got one more from uh, Lonely Planet. Ask the question: Would you like to become one of Santa's elves this Christmas season? Yeah. Who says I'm not already? 
<laughs> right, so there's this company called Lapland Safaris uh, in Finland that is looking for uh, for people to be uh, an elf uh, this Christmas season. Uh, the role of an elf is a guide and entertainer, uh, making sure that tourists get to their activities on time and are safe throughout their stay. But also, you're a magical creature that knows all of Santa's secrets and likes to have snowball fights with children. Hmm. I do like to throw stuff at um, children. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a major qualification apparently um i part one of the reasons i i uh picked the story is because i get to i get to bust out some some more finnish pronunciations here so elves will not only work in rovaniemi the capital of lapland and santa's official home but other finnish cities like sarasoka Leave Lev Heta and Ilos. You know, every time you say those, it sounds like you're speaking backwards, right? Like, I bet if we like played this backwards, you'd be saying like Johnsonville and. Oh, <laughs> Ogden, go. North Haver. So all will receive. <laughs> yes, all elves will receive elf training, which ranges from people skills to cold protection. Something that's necessary beyond the Arctic Circle. Arctic Circle. Elfing season goes from the end of November to the end of December, and it'll be sure to be filled with Christmas magic. Elfing season makes it sound like they're gonna hunt them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get there and they're like, "Oh, by the way, this is a uh, this is all a trick." <laughs> Is that that like, ceiling where you just walk around and bop them on the head? Is that what we're doing here? With the club? Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay extra for that, I think. Uh, so they're looking for qualifications. They're looking for somebody who is energetic, outgoing, and positive with good social skills. Speak excellent English as well as a second language like Spanish or French is a bonus. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and throw up the link for the uh, job application. You still have a few more days to to, to get up there to Finland and be safe. Does it say what the pay range is? Is there a height requirement? Relocation assistance? Is <laughs> uniform? Is the uniform I provided? I think the benefits package is a little lacking. However, you do get to hang out with Medical Santa Claus. Intent. So the benefits package is just a bag of candy canes. <laughs> Where is it at again? It's uh, you said Finland, right? Finland, yes, Lapland in Finland, uh, the official home of Santa Claus. Is it? Finland? Apparently it is. Is that like his off-season home? Because I was always told it was the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> it's beyond the Arctic Circle, so... Uh, I have a feeling okay, my cool. parents Good lied news. to me. Uh, Finland has free health care, so it has a good benefits packet. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> and you need it, because being an elf is really like a high-risk position. Oh, yeah. And, and, all the, and all the candy you're going to eat, you're going to need the dental work, for sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Long hours, stressful, high, uh, fast-paced Long work. hours, short workers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring it at me, elves. Come on. Uh, we've alienated yet another segment of our audience. <laughs> That's why nobody likes us. <laughs> Including the elves. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for the news segment. After the break, we're going to uh, talk about all kinds of ways that you can experience Harry Potter in your own life. Not only at the theme parks, but uh, we've got some other pretty cool places that you can look out, uh, that you can visit around the world. So stay tuned for that right after this word from our sponsor. Serpents and Spiders, Tale of a Rat. After these messages, we'll be right back. When it comes to planning your next adventure, knowledge and preparation are always key. That's why a call to your Key to the World Travel Vacation Planner should always be at the top of your to-do list when you feel the urge to venture forth and explore the world. Key to the World Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner, specializing in travel to Disney theme parks around the world, as well as Disney Cruise Line, Alani, and Adventures by Disney. With over 450 travel advisors who share a deep love for Disney destinations, Key to the World Travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion to help you experience all the magic with none of the work. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you, Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency with the expertise to get you where you want to go. So whether you're headed to Universal Studios, Hawaii, Europe, or somewhere a little farther off the beaten track, your first step should always be to visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key 
to a magical vacation. We're seated in Dumbledore's office, surrounded by his centuries-old collection of magical books and apparatus. The past headmasters of Hogwarts stared down at us from their portrait frames, confused as to why a trio of muggles has been allowed into this inner sanctum of the wizarding world. The great wizard turns to us and says, of course you realize there are more places than just the universal theme parks to find a bit of magic in this world. I'd love to share some examples with you. Come, let us step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. We we wanted to step away from Disney parks for a little while and talk about uh, some of the ways that you can get some Harry Potter into your life. Uh, this time of year, I kind of, even though even though the the books and the movies kind of follow the course of a whole year, I always sort of mostly think of like Christmas time, winter time with Harry Potter for some reason. Probably because the movies do such a good job of just really setting setting the scene at Hogwarts in the snow. But um, uh, so first up, I had uh, well. Dave already told us about one Harry Potter hotel. Uh, in a couple of earlier episodes, we talked about how you can spend spend a night in Hagrid's hut, or we just talked about Godric's Hollow a couple of nights ago. Um, but I found an option uh, right in London where you can uh, stay in the Wizard's Chambers at the Georgian House Hotel. Did you guys get a chance to, to look at yeah, this one? Yeah, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I got to be honest. Uh, you know, I knew Harry Potter was a big deal, right? But I didn't realize it was that big. Like, this is <laughs> really, yeah. I mean, obviously, listen, there's Potterheads. I get it. I'm on board. Um, <laughs> Can't fall. No, no. I, I secretly thought Harry Potter is fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I guess I just didn't realize, especially across the pond, how big it was. It's like their version of Disney. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's there's you can take all kinds of tours of the landmarks uh around the country where they film the stuff but um i mean i actually i i sort of missed the harry potter craze when it was first sweeping the world um i was just a little too old for the books or at least i had decided i was too old for the books i i see now that they're really for pretty much all ages but yeah, it's uh once I realized how big of a deal it was, I think it was when my mom started reading them. Like they're they're huge. So yeah. it doesn't surprise me at yeah. this point that there's hotels and, and all of these sort of experiences that are unofficial but are sort of based on them. Yeah. Yeah, so unofficial. So uh this hotel, um the wizard chamber, it's it's actually just they've got four rooms uh in this in this hotel, which almost it almost kind of looks like what we might call like a, a bed and breakfast, it's like a looks like a big townhouse. Looks like it's like a townhouse that's split up into hotel rooms. But so they've got one room on the ground floor, and then three r- rooms in the basement that is uh, made to look kind of like a uh, like it's down in the dungeons or something. Uh, uh, so each of the rooms are decorated to look like uh, you're in the dormitories, uh, straight out of the movies with. Uh, Faux stone walls, and they've got these big four-poster beds, and uh, just kind of like uh, candles all over the place, fireplaces, all kinds of antique-looking knickknacks that put you right in the middle of the uh, right in the middle of the movies. Of course, uh, each of the four rooms there, each one is four themed to one of the four houses at Hogwarts, and so the appropriate house colors and mascots are. Uh, Kind of all over the room. I saw in one of the articles that they said that when you go down in the basement, you can turn on a fog machine to create a little extra atmosphere going down into the dungeons. And that when you open the room doors, there's like a sensor that starts uh, playing uh, the the score from the movie to, That's awesome. to really set the scene for you. <laughs> so, Except if you can't turn like, that off. <laughs> You're like, please, right? I just want to go to bed. <laughs> it just keeps going on and on and on. <laughs> so whimsical and magical <laughs> yeah, they almost need to uh to put that some type of painting on the front door or you know uh some type of portrait that talks to you even if it's just yeah. some recorded track just so you can get in yeah. yeah i'm surprised they didn't use like an led screen to make some sort of moving portrait <laughs> yeah that may be a little high budget for for what it is i mean it, it looks cool for sure, hey man, they got smoke machines um, in the stairs. Come on, they got the budget. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so cheap. <laughs> I do like how that. So you know, this is unofficial, so they can't 
basically, you know, plaster Gryffindor all over the place or things like that. Right. So that it's it, it they've had to be creative with how they've used um, the colors. And I like that. I think that's pretty cool because it's subtle, but it, it still evokes the same feeling. And I still think the Hufflepuff room should just be a closet. <laughs> oh, poor Hufflepuff. Sorry, right, my wife's Hufflepuff. <laughs> so <is> mine. <laughs> I had a total of seven minutes in the movie. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate that they make them all seem that they're just kind of bumbling and dirty. They're like the wacky neighbor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs one of those in yeah. their lives. I mean, I don't know, like, if I'm going to England, uh, I don't, I, if, if I had, like, an extra night in my trip, I would probably just do, like, one night at a hotel like this. I don't know if I could do multiple nights like all week. yeah i don't i don't think i could i i'm, I'm not a huge harry potter fan it, it looks still like a nice hotel room like a nice bed and breakfast but i don't know i think i would be like well it's it's like you know traveling to paris and just going to disneyland paris and then turning around and leaving i would be like ah oh, i gotta make sure i get at least some other stuff in here yeah you gotta see like uh uh the doctor who stuff and, uh, <laughs> james bond right. stuff and the uh uh, I'm trying to think of other. England hasn't had much you going on. Fictional it's characters a, up, you got the two fictional easy characters ones, off the top of my head. The Austin <laughs> Power King, stuff. The, the King, yeah, the Kingsman. You got to see the Kingsman. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody's talking about that. <laughs> uh, now that we got lodging out of the way, uh, how about we take a look at uh, someplace magical to get a bite to eat and some drinks. Uh, start out as a pop-up. It's in New York City. It's called The Cauldron, and it's a magical gastro pub and a full experience because downstairs they've got just uh, the bar and the restaurant. They do like the uh, molecular gastronomy thing where they make like special effects food. Upstairs you can sign up for potions class. and uh, That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now what's exciting to me about that is I watched a video about it. So you you take basically a class, you get a magic wand, and you get to basically work real magic, as they call it, to change your drinks and do special alchemy. Um, what surprised me, though, is I'm, as far as I can tell, the, the wands they use look like they're the exact same technology as the wands used at Universal. Um, Except for half the cost. Yeah, that's, yeah, it looks like they definitely were cheaper. I think they were only like $20 a wand. But I watched the video a few times and, and looked at it, and it looks like they use, yeah, the chip technology to activate certain things during the class, which I found pretty interesting. Yeah, I know that the, the, the tips will, like, light up on the wands, but they also might do the reflector. It's, um, but the classes, I mean, it's not, uh, hour and, let's see. Hour and 45 minute classes. Four. Yeah, and then depending on... Depending on if you're a peak season date or not, it's either forty four ninety nine or fifty four ninety nine uh, a person, and included in that is you get a uh, welcome pint of beer that you use your magic wand to dispense from a. I don't know. I saw taps that were coming out of like unicorn heads and stuff. I saw one that was a tree. It was like a giant tree. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you get to make two uh, magical cocktails or mocktails. Um, that's like mixing them up in cauldrons and stuff. And you get a robe. You get a they they allow you to wear a robe. So, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, the video the video is great because you got all these. And again, it's like uh, we can't officially say we're Harry Potter, but uh, it's a bunch of Harry Potter nerds sitting around, yeah, <laughs> brewing up <laughs> Enjoy, potions, enjoying life. <laughs> and yeah, these themed bars are becoming a really big thing, especially in New York. Um, they've got. I think it's called the Beetle Bar, which is a Beetlejuice themed bar as well. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. it seems to be sort of the new trend right now is to have an interesting theme to your bar. Yeah, this one definitely is. It looks like there's fire all over the place and smoke and fog and weird lights and you know, they've got like all these little bottles of ingredients that you mix together your potion and things light up or change color or I'm I'm pretty sure they probably cut the drinks off at two so that you don't get any rowdy wizards. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> something tells me that yeah and, you know they want to turn it the tables over quickly too so they're probably cutting you off kind of like uh Olga's cantina they want you in and out you know come spend your two two drinks and get out yeah yeah otherwise i would be just camped out all night but long. see i mean it's it's it looks pretty decent it's too. pretty smart because they're not just saying all right come in and then just rushing you out they're actually giving you like a set program 
so that, I mean, when that program's over, yeah, you're going to want to leave anyway. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a full yeah. experience. And then you go back downstairs, and it sounded like uh, you could use the wands downstairs in the main uh, bar room, too, for ordering I wonder how many times uh, I wonder drinks. how many times the bartender gets a wand waved in his face, like trying. Uh, You're gonna make me a drink for free. It's like finger snapping yeah. with the wand. <laughs> Expecto shots. <laughs> yeah, and the wands are. I mean, the wands you can order. Uh, they do it through their Kickstarter, and you can like customize uh, customize the look of the wand, and then they even will sell you leather wand holsters that you can strap your wand to. Uh, <laughs> your arm or they've got one that looks like a looks like a shoulder holster uh, but for your wand yeah (laughs) no i'm just happy to see you (laughs) (laughs) that's not a wand in my pocket (laughs) that's a whole different facet of harry potter fandom i don't think we're uh, harry potter slash can you pack two wands can you have two wands one in each and then you can just you know (laughs) two wand minimum yeah and then you just uh yeah (laughs) Uh, it looks like they also have a uh, tea you can go in for a, for the tea room. But yeah, so that place looks pretty awesome. I'm not going to a bar to have tea. I don't care what kind of magic they have. I don't, <laughs> I don't care if this is English yeah. or not. I don't want stupid tea. No tea. <laughs> but it's but it's magical. You tea. bring me a crumpet, you're going to get the crumpet slapped. Is it magical in that they put rum in it before they brought it to me? Because that's the only magic I'm uh, concerned well, about. The website. <laughs> The website does describe it as their famous boozy tea, oh, so I'm going to go with it. I retract my firmer <laughs> statement. That's, uh... Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, Jess, you uh, you found something about uh, uh, Harry Potter on the high seas. Yeah, so apparently um, we've got uh, brought to us by Barge Lady Cruises in England, um, a Harry Potter cruise. Um, now, this was announced, I think, um, last year, but um, I haven't been able to find much more information on it other than the announcement about it. So I'm not sure if it just hasn't happened yet. Um, So it's going to be a Harry Potter cruise. It's going to take place on a ship called the Magna Carta, which is not very original, but, uh, (laughs) and it's going to set sail from uh, Hampton court in the United kingdom and travel down the river Thames uh, while making a few stops along the way, um, including uh, Virginia water where Harry met Buckbeak in prisoner of Azkaban Picket Post Close, which is a location used for the home of the Dursley family, um, and Oxford's Christ Church College, where the Great Hall was used as a model for Hogwarts Great Hall. Yeah, so there'll be, and there's apparently going to be, or there was, uh, Harry Potter themed activities, uh, Hogwarts friendly cuisine, which I'm not sure what that means, and a visit to the Warner Brothers studio for the Harry Potter tour. Yeah, which yeah, I'm, that's worth it, right? That right there alone, it makes it worth. Yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yep. So yeah, plus it's, you, it's interesting. The plus you get that river cruise experience. Yeah, and and it's not too. It's not badly priced. The rates approximately four thousand one hundred and ninety dollars per person. Which okay. cruise pricing, you know, I, for river cruises in England, that's that's not that bad, really. When you factor in the focus on Harry Potter, I mean, truly, yeah. It's, I mean, you're you're definitely going for the niche uh, market there, but as we were saying before, there's some rabid fans that will eat it up. So, oh yeah, I mean, they'll drop two hundred bucks for a cloak and you know jacket at the park. Oh yeah, so. I mean, I'm not even a huge Harry Potter fan, but I had to walk away with a wand and a stand for the wand, which <laughs> so I'm like you know eighty five bucks down, and I think I've read that half of the first book. I've seen all the movies, but. <laughs> <laughs> They got your number. Yeah, I just love theme park stuff. So if it works well and it's yeah, entertaining, that's... I'll do it. The books and the movies are exactly the same. There's no difference. That's what I've heard. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me, have you guys ever seen Muggles playing Quidditch? Uh, not until you sent me the link. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I don't know if it's still available. There used to be a documentary about it on Netflix called Mudbloods, and if it's still on there, um, or I suggest you search this documentary out wherever you can find it because this is intense. Yeah, intense. A- after watching them play, yeah. the only thing I can think of is like this is a really fun way to get a groin injury. Something, oh yeah, something's getting. Broken. Yeah, I mean it's it's one thing to play that kind of ball based sport like rugby or football. It's another thing to do it with a broomstick in between your legs at all times, and it just oh. yeah it 
and it gets violent. Yeah. It's like it's like how you know, like lacrosse, how they describe like when the Native Americans would play lacrosse and they would be out there breaking arms and stuff. Um, like I, I was reading a story about how the guy playing. Okay. So I guess we should explain what happens in muggle Quidditch. So they've got the teams just like in the books and the movies, they've got a person playing the golden snitch who is usually, usually from the cross country. Cause they, they have a collegiate. This is mostly played at colleges. They do have Seems just like, like community rec leagues also they have two different leagues in america a community rec league and the college league so usually it's from like the the cross country team they get a runner from there to be the snitch and and the snitch just goes and runs around campus wherever they want uh they are required to return back to the playing field once every like 20 minutes something like that um and uh, seekers can go run around try to catch them. Uh, meanwhile, on the Quidditch pitch, you've got the hoops, and they're trying to throw the balls through, and they're throwing other guys are throwing balls at them, and it's full contact, and it gets really rough. And they are out there playing Quidditch, and it sounds very man. tiring. Yeah, it's a lot of running. You know, I, I do it for two, three minutes because because you gotta you gotta be on that broom, but that broom's not moving you the way they do in the movies. So I don't know if that's a game for me. But and it looks like it's in it's insanely hard to run with that thing in between your legs. That's oh yeah, that, it's it's like more of a penguin. <laughs> so let me tell you, it sure is. <laughs> uh, and that's where we took the turn. That's where the turn was taken. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen, it's kind of right? like it's 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 that walk you run the run walk you do and you have to go to the bathroom real bad so you have to like uh, yeah. yeah it is very reminiscent of that <laughs> a little clutch <laughs> a, little, a little bit you know no one to go too fast because you'll soil All right, your so rooms. anyway the reason <laughs> it's like going to flows essentially is what it's like oh, there it is <laughs> oh there we have it uh so the reason the reason i bring it up is um We've got a location for the U- United States National Quidditch Championship taking place in April 2020. It's going to be in West Virginia. So I guess the sure. question is, where do we sign up our team? Like, how many people do you need? Uh, so between us three, we'll get Heather and Jeff in. How many more do we need? Um, let's see. Man, like they're showing. I'm looking at the website, and there's these teams have like like 15, 16 people on the team. So we're going to need to find some. A whole bunch of athletic people to pick <laughs> Fill up out the ranks there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just here for the jersey. So. I'm here for the broomstick. <laughs> I want the participation trophy at the end. <laughs> but we're going to do it, though. Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm signing us up right now. I'm going to be sick that day. <laughs> Whatever day that is. <laughs> I don't feel like I could compete with college kids anymore. Five years ago, I could do it. Now, <laughs> I, I don't want to. Everything hurts. Okay, boomer. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. So, U.S. Quidditch Cup 13. That's right. They've been doing this for 13 whole years, and you didn't even know it. It's kind of like uh, geocaching, where there's this whole secret world going on. behind. Anyway. I feel like my I'm life hurt. hasn't been completed until now. Yeah, now you know that there's there's people out there playing Quidditch, and they've been doing it for 13 years. So uh, April 18th through 19th, 2020, is going to be in Charleston, West Virginia. Hmm. And they've also announced for 2021 will be in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, so uh, it's a chance to see some championship, championship level Quidditch playing. I feel like they missed the chance, though. For the 15th year, they, they probably should have had that at Universal. Yeah, I'm surprised that they don't have some sort of like show where they right? do that. Like, yeah, that's where they need to take out the uh, uh, fear factor and put in some type of like <laughs> Quidditch. Yeah, just connect. I mean, I mean, the singing frogs are cool and all, but it, I can see some people. It's not beating another person with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, if you really want to see that, there are other parts of Orlando ball. you could just walk to. <laughs> I mean, it is Orlando. It does sound like a lot of fun just to hit somebody with a giant <laughs> stick. Next time you're at Universal, you're just going to be walking through Diagon Alley, whacking people with your wand. <laughs> I'm playing Quidditch. Leave me alone. 
<laughs> Sir, we're going to need you to stop doing that. I'm a Quidditch player. <laughs> they do sell the robes there. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. At a premium. <laughs> this is what JK wanted, okay? She wanted me to hit. She wanted me to run around and hit people with a stick. <laughs> Joe said I was allowed to. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I had on my list was um i guess we can lump them together kind of just kind of mentioned uh the warner brothers studio tour and then but basically everywhere you go around london somebody's going to point something out that was in one of the harry potter movies you can uh at at king's cross station you can go find platform nine and three quarters you can go see the dursley's house and uh all that cool stuff um there's lots of people that are happy to uh, take your money in exchange for a tour. You can go on railroad tours and see the countryside that they uh, went through on the Hogwarts Express. But then Warner Brothers Studio London has a uh, has a Harry Potter specific tour that looks like if you're a Harry Potter fan, it is the place to be. It looks like they basically um, kept everything. Like, yeah, I mean, everything. it's very. On point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's on point because it's exactly what was there. You go into the Great Hall set. Uh, there's a section, Aragog's Lair from the Forbidden Forest. You can walk into. There's a platform in nine and three quarters. There's a bank. Yeah. Diagon Alley, the set. Uh, there so i mean and that's just part of it then you go through and there's millions of props and costumes and uh go into the potions class classroom uh see dumbledore's office and uh, all of the memory vials from his from his cabinet there's even professor umbridge's office with all of her cat plates and everything yeah that looks pretty cool i want to see that in person <laughs> the uh, pink office with all the cats <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, all the, like, special effects room and the different creatures, and they've got the animatronics. They've got, uh, they got, like, a big, scary, bas- full size basilisk mouth that you can stand That's right up awesome. against there. Looks like, yeah. too, they have different dinners going on during uh, Christmas yeah. season. So gets, yeah, that looks pretty awesome. Uh, where's that? Only 240 euros or pounds. One of the other. It's uh, totally a. Affordable, yeah. Dinner in the Great Hall, um, 9th, 10th, and 11th of December. Be graded with welcome drinks and canapes before taking your seat in the Great Hall for a two course festive dinner. It's all decked out for Christmas, and I mean, that's kind of like yeah, that's awesome. And it's already sold out for the uh, season, of course. But 15 minutes uh, after those went on sale, they were gone. Unless you were on it, you weren't getting it, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, dinner, and then uh, they take you to Platform 9 and 3 quarters uh, for a dessert party. And you can dance the night away until midnight. And, yeah, that'd be pretty fantastic to see. Looks like they have, too, all the snacks. You know, the exploding bonbons, the flavored jelly beans. Yeah, it looks like they're the exact yeah. same ones they sell at Universal, which not very yeah. surprising. but yeah. Probably. <laughs> Probably, yeah. It's awesome. Uh, and then next year, um, they've got they got stuff for the dark side. Jess, I know you're a Slytherin, right? I am. Yes. They they're going to be having a special exhibition on all things Slytherin uh, as part of the tour, uh, starting in April of next year until September, which is leading up to uh, the Halloween season next year, twenty uh, fifth of September through eighth of November. They're going to be highlighting uh, highlighting the dark arts, and the Great Hall set will be decorated with floating pumpkins, uh, kind of recreating what the Halloween party scenes looked like during the movie. That's really smart that they change it up each season. Yeah. Yeah. This Ooh, is where I need cool. to win the Powerball. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Wait a second. So... So, ooh, this is awesome. Part of this Halloween experience thing. So they they uh, they teach you the wand moves like you're doing dueling class. Oh, and then man. and then and then the Death Eaters come in to uh, <laughs> to try to trash the place and you get to have a wizard duel with the Death Eaters. <laughs> nice. And then the classic Halloween party experience where you like 
blindfolded and reach into the bowl of peeled grapes in his dead man's eyes and stuff. <laughs> uh, they got vats of troll snot, buckets of dribbling drool, and pools of silvery unicorn blood. You can see how the slime and goo was created. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's... I, I gotta go. I think I gotta go. <laughs> so, we yeah, need to like and subscribe to this. So that... <laughs> So the, yeah, we'll set, we'll set up a Patreon account. So we send us. Send us. <laughs> we will do a live episode from there. Ooh. While putting yeah. our hands in. Troll snot. Troll snot. And I we promise. can stay at the Harry Potter bed and breakfast and then go injure ourselves playing Quidditch. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It's, we can make it like a three day thing. So cause we're going to need Basically, at least. Yeah. We're going to need a day and a half to recover from the Quidditch. <laughs> and I need a lot more than that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, my back already hurts. Keep in mind, uh, th- this uh, this gig doesn't have a benefits package that includes uh, <laughs> health. So Quidditch health insurance. insurance. Yeah. Wait a second, I don't have no. health insurance. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. You're gonna have to get through that that through your uh, primary. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um. So. Unless you guys have anything else, I think that leads us back to the big one that we we all know and love, uh, Universal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there was nothing like seeing that the first time. Yeah. No, I remember that was actually, it was uh, just a year ago for me. I saw it for the first time. Uh, Same time, I think. Diagon Alley, and it was, wow. I, 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 I had never seen anything like that in a in a theme park, you know, I just, I didn't realize that they, that was something that was even possible. I think, I, I think in terms of theming, they outdid, you know, Disney's usually a tier, top tier, number one. Uh, I would say they outdid Disney on that. Uh, well, they kind of had to because originally Disney was in talks with JK Rowling to put Harry Potter in their parks, but Disney was only willing to commit to, I think maybe a ride or two, like a special like section, not even a yeah. full land. If I'm, if toy I'm correct, it's going to be like a toy story land. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted to have characters. They wanted to have people that looked like Harry and Ron and, and Hermione to meet. And that just didn't sit well with JK Rowling. So she ended up going with universal who basically just bid a better land than Disney did. Yeah. So, I mean, she has the creative control, so. Yeah, she gets yeah. this final say. So, you know, why would you not do that? You you basically have your own half of two separate parks um, to do whatever you want with. Yeah, they've. I I do like that we get two separate lands. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the first time we've seen that in a theme park too, where two separate theme park lands in the same resort. Or yeah. based off of one property. Same to be three. Soon to be three, right? With uh, well, unofficially, or it hasn't been unofficially. Yes. Yeah, okay. it hasn't been announced. So, but if they don't potentially build, right, if they don't build another, whether it's Fantastic Beasts or whatever, yeah. um, I, I would like to see a Ministry of Magic. I would that like would to see like yeah, like it could be all indoors, you know, and just make it a gigantic cavernous, you know, you have rides leading off of that, and then also if you've got it indoors, then you don't have to worry about the weather. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll see what they what they end up putting in Epic Universe, but I would I'd be very surprised if we don't see a third. Yeah. Uh my question from the theme park news desk, uh Jess, is there any update on the B situation on Hagrid's uh roller coaster? <laughs> <laughs> um no no new news from uh from the B contingency. Um I do know that they're still they're still not running Hagrid's on a full day schedule. Did it just open too soon? Is that the problem? Like it just opened too it soon did. and it couldn't quite handle. It did. Um, it well, there there were changes from the original concept, um, and then I think yeah, they just had there's there's a lot of animatronics in that ride. Yeah. And I think the problem that they're having is mainly with the animatronics. So, and I mean, yeah. if you if you don't have those running, the, sh- the 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 ride itself is just kind of pointless. So it's not like a, it's a nice roller coaster, but yeah. It's not a Yeti you can park it, you know what I mean? So you have to... No, nah, you can't put a strobe light on it and just say that it's, you know, Disco, disco Hagrid or something. But <laughs> You need it to work. Yeah. So, yeah, they've, they've been still running it on half-day schedules. But, I mean, everybody that's been on that, I've, I haven't heard a bad thing about it. 
everybody seems to love it's, it's it. It's a so. pretty long attraction too, right? I mean, it's it's like six thousand feet of track or something like that. So it's not a quick. No, it's not. Yeah, for for a coaster, it's it's surprisingly long. I mean, you compare it to something like Disney did recently, like Slinky Dog or Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and yeah, it's it's definitely on the long end compared to those. Makes you think of the Incredicoaster because I think the Incredicoaster is around five thousand feet of track or something yeah. along that line. So it's, it's I think so. It's definitely worth it because you have it's you're not even if you're waiting two or three hours for it, it's not a ninety seven second ride like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Yeah, exactly. You're actually going to be able to- yeah. something else that's great that I really love is um, taking advantage of the early entrance hours that you get when you stay at a Universal Resort. Mm-hmm. And when we when we were there this past May and uh, having Diagon Alley practically to ourselves, I mean, those streets were empty. Everybody was, I guess, had gotten in line for uh, Escape from Gringotts. Whatever they call that coaster. Yep, that's yeah. it. Yep, that's yeah, it's good for you guys. <laughs> yes. Um, and man, when, the, when those those alleys and streets are empty, it makes for some some great pictures. And just uh, it's in, you don't see that anywhere else in any theme park. We were there before uh, in May when I was there last. Um, and it was before college had got out, before high school had gotten out, uh, and before Hagrid's. And it, it, it was pretty busy even then. So I can only imagine what it what it's like during peak season that's where the vip tours come into play yeah i've done the vip tour through universal and that was very nice because it was actually a pretty busy day when we did it and yeah those are i I highly recommend that if if getting on to whatever you want as quickly as possible is is a priority the vip tour for universal is is worth the money that or a, a premier hotel yeah. Oh, do, do both. Because, yeah. I mean, then you got, yeah, you get the Express Pass and then the VIP tour. Because, you know, VIP tour, you only want to do that one day. I, I wouldn't, even if I had the money, I probably wouldn't do a VIP tour every day that I Not was visiting. But, yeah, after staying in the Premier Hotel with the Express Pass, I don't really want to stay anywhere else while I'm there. Ever. Ever. No, never again. But I would like, uh, and I don't know if this is something that, that you know, J.K. Rowling put in her contract that they can never do but you know we've got a jurassic park kids suite at universal we've got a despicable me kids suite how do we not have a harry potter themed suite in any of the hotels on site because the georgia house uh uk <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like we can't do that now they're already doing it you have to wait you gotta wait <laughs> they ruined it yeah um so uh, one thing I really enjoyed uh, this last trip was exploring. What do you guys have um, favorite magical wizarding foods that you can only get in Diagon Alley or Hogsmeade? I well, I think I'm the only one in the world that doesn't like butter beer. I wasn't. Yeah, I, can, I wasn't I, completely sold on it either. I mean, it wasn't bad. I just it's not my. It's too sweet. I didn't like it. I can take it or leave it. I like the chocolate frogs just because they're chocolate. I was and just I gonna say chocolate. the chocolate flies are. I think pretty cool. Those those type of things, like just because you. And I think I still have the frog here somewhere. I never actually opened it. Cause, you know, <laughs> I was like, I think I'm trying to keep. <laughs> I always eat mine. <laughs> now I'm like, right, maybe I'll eat it later. Um, I I tried um, just because it had the weirdest sounding name at the at the leaky cauldron, the uh, toad in the hole. I think it was. Oh yeah, it was That's like, like a, a standard British. Thing, yeah, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just a couple of sausages in a in a like Yorkshire pudding kind of thing. So mm-hmm. basically, sausages and bread, and it came with peas that were surprisingly because it was at a theme park vegetable. It was like the best peas I've ever had. <laughs> I'm not a pea eater, and it was they were they were they were rather good. That's actually a really uh, good place to eat. I think all their fish and chips is what I have standard English food. Um, yeah, the whole menu looked great. I had a hard time choosing. And the uh, um, pumpkin soda was, oh, was pretty yeah. phenomenal. That one is really good. I'm, I was surprised by that one. I'm not a, usually a big pumpkin fan, so but that one's good. I know my wife enjoyed the uh, shepherd's pie from there also. And then the other one is, uh, man, wizards have good ice cream. Have you <laughs> yeah. partaken in the, in the wizarding ice cream? That's what I used my snack on for that day. Yeah. I paid out of pocket yeah. for the butter beer and got the, for some reason, and got the, <laughs> the snack as an ice cream. Yeah, 
What, fla- what flavor did you try? Oh, I don't even was remember. Was it the weird? I'll be honest with you. I can't remember what it was. I I got I got lavender. It was like lavender and Earl Grey, I think it was. It was like surprisingly, surprisingly some of the best ice cream I've ever had. It sounds like old lady ice cream. I know. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, did it come in a doily? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> So have have either of you guys done the interactive one experience? I have not at the parks. No, I no. Have. I I watched the show um, in Hogsmeade where they do the whole having the wand select somebody, but I didn't. I don't have an interactive wand to myself. I'm a sucker for merchandise, so of course I <laughs> I bought a Death Eater wand, um, and I did it with my son, and um, it's. It's really interesting. When it works, it's great. Yeah. When it doesn't work, it's extremely frustrating. And right. yeah, luckily, I mean, it's it's kind of funny because a lot of it, I think, has to do with the motions that you do. They have to be exactly correct. If you're not kind of like the right way. Exactly. Kind of like in the movies and the books, like you have to do it exactly right. And luckily, they put um, team members around the land who sort of stand by waiting for you to get frustrated and then help you out. Um, but some of the effects are actually pretty cool. Um, like some of the um, – there's one of the stores where – I can't remember the name of it, but you can buy stuffed versions of the animals featured in the stories. Um, yeah, like the windows on the outside of that, you can sort of make the animals come to life. There's a lot of really different, really cool things that you can do, and they have them in both lands. Um, so, yeah, if you're if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, I, I suggest that highly because – you know, makes you feel like you're actually doing it. And I saw just as many adults doing it as I did kids. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. When you get their age, doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and all the crazy people walking around in the Florida heat I, in those oh, wizard yeah, robes and scarves. Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's dedication, but that is a whole new level. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's a spell that'll stop me from sweating, I am not doing that. Yeah, ice. <laughs> ice hidden everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Stay hydrated. Gold bond. <laughs> <laughs> that's key well so anything anything else that uh, you guys uh desperately want to talk about when it comes to harry potter at universal no, I, think I can't they, think of anything i think i'm actually thinking job. i'm actually thinking about trying they have a special harry potter package that they do through universal um so it's basically kind of like their normal vacation package where it's theme park tickets and hotel um but this one also comes with you get uh, breakfast, I, I think three broomsticks. Um, I think you get two meals actually at either three broomsticks, leaky cauldron. Um, then it also comes with a special photo session where you get a, when a, a basically a magical moving photo, but it's technically just a DVD video. Right. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it comes with that. And then you get like a sort of a special welcome package that comes with Harry Potter. It comes in a little like treasure chest, right? With, yeah, uh, it's like a little chest and it has and... little little uh, tags, little luggage tags that look like Harry and Ron and Hermione. Um, yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but it just, it's, you know, seems like something I want to add on and give it, give it a shot. I've had clients who have done it and they loved it. So I'm definitely going to give that a shot. They know, they know how to make the Harry Potter fans happy yeah yeah no, they did a good job with theming i mean they're really that's that's like the top of the bar it has to be and I'm, I'm curious like with the third one coming up now that sort of they set yeah they set the bar with the first two and now disney has only had the choice but to try to meet them at least with star wars um which they've done which i feel they've done a pretty good job on um <laughs> But you know, Universal's Easy, not. Dave. Universal's Easy. not gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna let him t- get a word in. It's like if I ever talk about Epcot or or Star Wars Land, I'm gonna keep talking so Dave can't get a word in. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I know that Universal is thinking about that, and they're probably gonna step up whatever third park they're gonna do for that or third yeah. land. But yeah, I want to see what everybody what wins. Yeah, I don't. I don't want a Fantastic Beast Land. I'll say that much. Oh, I don't hate the movies, but. I don't, it doesn't I don't feel fit. like they deserve. It doesn't yeah, fit. Yeah, they don't. Don't try to no. don't try to just make it fit. Um you know, it needs to let's stick to the original seven seven books for this. Yeah. And that's why I think, yeah, Ministry of Magic or some sort of dark arts based land. Just do a whole dark arts land. Awesome. Yeah. 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 You hear that, Universal? Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. 
Well, thanks for getting magical with us this week. Hope you enjoyed hearing about some ways that you can experience Harry Potter around the world. Uh, hopefully it gave you some ideas for a trip that you'd like to take. If it did, why don't you uh, head on over to Key to the World Travel at www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Ask for a no obligation quote and see how we can get a little magic in your life. Uh, tell a friend about how much you like this show and hopefully both of you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Be, uh, coming right back into your eardrums real quick. And so, until then, we're going to say, see you real soon. Don't go to flows. Don't go to flows. <laughs> <laughs> to ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the Gold Key Adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song Hoka Hey for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. And until then, remember, life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure.